everyone. Welcome to this lesson of our online course on online teaching. Uh, this here is going to be another lesson on tools that you can use to complement your teaching. And here with us is Natia from the Georgian Association of History Teachers. Uh, and she is going to talk with us um, about mind map. So Natia, thank you very much for being here with us. And yeah, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Liz. Hello, my colleagues, and thank you for your amazing videos and your amazing contributions so, and amazing hints. Today, I need to introduce something very useful, I will say, interesting digital tool for students. And uh, probably I tested it already and seems that uh, students had much more motivation to work on it. It should be not paranoia to use a lot of different pl platforms, of course, but it will be great to see some kind of diversity or, or, um, among the daily routine. So the easy way, firstly, uh, my aim is to discuss shortly about uh, how to go inside it. Secondly, I will introduce a bit shortly about several aspects of the techniques. And then I'll go to discuss uh, and to share with you my experience how to use it in case of content. Uh, let's click on the, you see my page here, Mind Map 2. And of course, the map is asking me to um, open. Uh, usually, uh, because I'm user often, I have this on the Google Drive, and you see my page here different webs and different my, my, my webs I have here. But just now, because of you, and maybe you are absolutely new user, let's do this create new map yes and we have two options here two options this is one payment option and one option is free just in this moment to be honest there is no much more difference a very small difference but because we're user often i decided and school paid for this and the, that's why to be uh, to, to avoid any kind of clashes but this happened not in this year this happened uh, several years ago so we're um, um, frequently user of this uh, web page so you see untitled mind map and for instance i need to my aim is today to start for example just to show you how to work um daily life let's start to click and uh, for instance during the any time general general title should be just for the and here as well i need to change see uh, daily alive but you'll say come on it's not evident as well it's easy choose easily so firstly we need to click again i need to go back to show you your internet connection is unstable yes because of raining <laughs> rainy is i guess but i will be uh, discuss slowly a bit so change note style, it's written. You can easily click on this. Then you see two options here, background and text. Uh, because uh, I'm teacher, I usually ask students to figure out my uh, no, or notes by red cover. It's easy to check, you know? Oh, red cover, it means teacher wrote, yes? So, and if it's still not visible effectively, see what I will do, I will click on it and click to change the node as well and see the white cover appeared and now you see daily life effectively and bit zoom will be okay for us and you see here a clear this is like board and you know why it's good you see each other's works and not only you as a teacher you see each other's works but students as well like ordinary lessons doing on and uh, this um, seems perfect right? and I actually uh, you see their work very soon. Uh, the second step, for instance, uh, usually we need to turn on uh, our save to be sure that we saved our work. The next step is, for instance, to build something. Daily life is nothing, but now I need to give them, for instance, something like hints or instructions. For instance, step uh, one, I'll write here, um, research, um, some, just uh, something, yeah, it doesn't matter just now, some pictures or some uh, sources, 
Uh, and of course, because it's belonged again to me, I need to color it as a red color and to follow this kind of instruction. Usually, you'll see very soon that I have several instructions for students because in one node, to, to put a lot of information from my site will be not correct. Step one, step two, this is my style to help them. It depends on the classes as well, of course. See, if I want again to give in other direction as well, uh, I will easily click the main node. Yes, and then to build the child node again. See, this new node uh, appeared here. And I will step two. Mm, only visual sources, for instance, yes, uh, here. I need to, just as an example. And again, because it's belongs to me, I need to color this. But if it's not mine and it's students, students need to choose by themselves the pair color. But the, it's big, a little bit complicated, you know, there is no option here to write who did this. So one student already suggested me, teacher, will be great to write firstly our name and then to go to our tasks. And I will follow the suggestion. I guess it's a great suggestion. For instance, um, Nadia, she decided to create some of her personal task and she decided to choose color white. Uh, blue, for instance, and then she needs to follow the instructions and to click uh, and to do the same routine uh, like the task was. I guess oh, this is very simple and very clear. Anyway, you can find this kind of um, videos uh, with a lot of suggestions. Uh, the one more option which I wanted to uh, discuss with you good option which we have here. It's also uh, to attached file, to attached file or attached map image picture or visual source, and it's uh, and uh, to attached uh, for instance something like web source, for instance one of the, my favorite web source. We know this, and my students favorite web sources list and then go see and you will see very soon I will put Historiana web source here and by clicking on it the website appeared here and it's perfect because you can easily click on it and you will see the which valid website students use because uh, in this digital era sometimes students are where well, I use the different 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 web sources this is also good to you know <clears throat> notice for them that not all web pages are pretty effective especially for us uh, another option, how to put, for instance, in similar node, for instance, the picture, easy. Uh, just you, uh, main point is you need to click on the node in which you need to pick the, put the picture. For instance, by clicking uh, the just image, yes, you see here, different options here are cute. The your photos or uploaded photos. So I will, I prefer just now, for, for example, to upload the photos. Then I will try to find um, my folder, something like, mm, I wrote teachers, but mm, here, yes. And for instance, this one I will upload. See what you see here? I chose this picture, Spanish flu, flu, and I guess it's uh, understandable why I chose this picture. But you see what is going here. The size is huge. So uh, what I ask students to compress the size as much as possible, for instance, 100. And by clicking here, you will see the suggested example. It's written automatically that suggested example is 56 size. So I prefer I don't, to follow the suggestion. And you see here the picture. Maybe from your perspective, size is too small. It's up to you to choose it, uh, the size. And you can try. 
Uh, the first main concept is be before giving the task, where are students? Yes. So we need to try. Is this good? Do we need just as a background, or we do, we need uh, as a special source? So if we need to analyze and to give them one task to analyze the source, of course, size should be different, and uh, size should be absolutely mm, uh, okay. For instance, this one. I will put to hundred and okay. I will put one hundred. Let's try. Oh, again, too small. We can zoom it by clicking this, but you see, zoom option has only written version and written not not the picture. So again, if we need to upload the big picture to give them same tasks and to ask them to evaluate the source, so we can change the size of the picture easily. So, and lastly, not to discuss about techniques too much, uh, how to attach file easily. The, it's not innovation at all. We're clicking on the, again, to show you uh, attach folder, attach file, but many is, again, don't uh, miss this, many is to push the, and to click on the node exactly, and node in which you need to put this attached file. Then upload it from any way from Google Drive. It's up to you to choose. Uh, for instance, okay, I will upload this file. For instance, this is picture, but again, as an exercise, see this picture of the task or the world file. It's up to you based on the tasks which will be given. So the you see here Mac. First uh, impression which I want to give you to zoom it, it's easy to click again on it. You, you need to do like another node would be great to uh, what is mean and what showed me practice to give them something like instruction, uh, suggestion instruction to build maximum amount of the nodes not to have the spider or not to have something like blend atmosphere here to uh, have possibility to check easily to look on it easily and to evaluate it easily so i prefer sometimes i ask them to um, build only separate uh, three three nodes separately of course will separate tasks or five nodes maximum yes uh, one node is nothing. It depends on the classes. It depends on the classes and uh, on the tasks. So it's up to you to choose the content. Now it's, uh, Alice, maybe do you have uh, some technical questions on it? Um, well, so far, I think uh, I followed everything. It looks fairly user friendly, as you said, and it looks quite interesting because, yeah, it, it really gives the idea of an instrument where you can upload uh, files or connect links where you can have the whole lesson spelled out with um, Minecraft, which is yeah. the name okay. of the website. Uh, the only question that I have is um, how do you use it in your lessons? Yeah. I assume that with the example it will be easier also for, for you sure, to show. Sure. That's why I wanted to ask you a question to go to a second stage of discussion. See? I prepared for you the, my several works, which mm -hmm. we already started to work. It's not completed, and don't criticize us too much, <laughs> my dear <laughs> colleagues. Uh, we're in working process in the same way, but you will see the grade 9, grade 10, and grade 11 works in different, absolutely different direction. So the style, uh, the uh, evidence one, how it's possible to use it, just to, uh, I will show you. Uh, you see here the work, the task for ninth grade student. And the task was, this was new unit, they had no idea to be honest about propaganda and censorship. And we just started to discuss and to call the, to discuss this unit. Firstly, it was my contribution to discuss, to introduce, like we're doing usually. Uh, after several lessons later on, we started to work in different direction to ask students to provide to provide by propaganda posters. Because they had no idea before about propaganda 
So the process was slow, but my aim was firstly see just to see in visual way how they identify exactly propaganda. And the content was one. The topic was, for instance, the propaganda bleeds during the World War II. Yes, in Britain. This was our case study, so called. And you see here, for instance, let's choose students one work and follow this direction. For instance, uh, this belongs to me because it's red cover. As I mentioned, students uh, choose their seat. His name is Michikov. He decided to write his name there and then to click to the notes to show us what he did. Uh, propaganda in Britain doing bleeds. Yeah, this was the task it out, first our task. And he chose the propaganda poster and actually it's cartoon, it's not poster. And then the next step based on Matara, my task was to analyze this poster. So you see here, the main message, this poster was created by a Minister of Information in 1942 in Britain. The poster was created to stop people talking about the sensitive information about the, and we need to check this. So this is not checked yet. I need to give them feedback partially, step by step, I'm working on it, but deadline still will be a bit later on. So we have uh, time to develop uh, what is going here, you know. Sometimes when I'm writing here, be sure, you need, for instance, my comments here, a bit, bit more evalu evaluation, sorry, I, a bit more evaluation, for, for instance, and I don't need to push him to look on the very uh, red color, so I will use this one. So this also belongs to me. So other students are also use the skins to develop and to improve their tasks. So just now, in this moment, I don't need this. I will remove, see how it's easy. You need to click on the button. But you see here, the main message of the poster, this poster was created, but this propaganda, this is now his idea about the poster, what kind of poster, what kind of classes you should have. So this is propaganda and didn't give people the right to speak. So this is main aim message he wanted to mention. This poster shows daily routine situation. Mm. Um, yes, we need to think about, or I need to ask, what does it mean? Women sitting in a bus, and this caused panicking people. Oh yeah, a bit vague, yes? Of course, my later comment will be here. Please clarify a little bit. Needs bit clarification or development, you, what do you mean? Since this is a, I'd like it, but you were never safe from the enemy, and that they could be anywhere. Okay, so seems like, he understood this uh, main clue point of this poster. But for clarification, anyway, it's ninth grade student. We need to work on it, and we will. <laughs> and now we see here the website which he, he put here. Let's check what type of website. Oh, yeah, um, this is the page. Yes. Um, we see. But he found is a way to so commons something education. So I'm sure he chose this website because he saw that it's educator portal, and that's why. And I guess he wanted to look on inside as well. He's one of the um, smart students in the class, and of course we'll discuss this during the class. What kind of website? Seems that it's a valid, of course. So go back and look again his in other work, in other books. This source is directly from the British government, so we can understand the point of the view of government during the World War II. Um, beat clarification needs, of course. We will discuss this during the lesson as well. This could really help the government, since the citizens talk less about the plans, and there was less ch uh, chance for the information to spread. And lastly, he wanted to mention, less rumors would spread about the British government. Okay, but one more issue he adds. What is the, his personal opinion about this? 
So this was also one task. And of course, I will just now was due together. I will add one. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I need again to click on it. And uh, your personal you. Uh, I definitely need to uh, know what Michelle, for instance, the student thinks about this, about censorship, about this kind of attitude during the war, because our next stage will be other countries. Um, I will zoom out this bit for you to see the full picture, how it looks from other students. I'll show one more evidence as well. So we, have, again, I want to clarify, this is not very deep work because students are ninth grade and what I wanted to give them to understand the aim of the propaganda. But we see not only very simple work, we see some attempt to analyze the sources. Now let's choose another, oh, he did, Twice, so he chose another source as well. He did just only one. <laughs> no, see, uh, so his engagement. He wanted to share again one more evidence. Also, a good example. <laughs> this is a surprise for me, but anyway, it's pretty good. But I want to uh, see others' case. Oh, why we have here this poster? Mm. So this is my remark immediately during the lesson. For instance, Nias, she chose this, I will zoom it a bit for you. Censorship in Britain during the World War II, she chose this. And censored photograph and uncensored photograph. And then uh, I remember she decided to, oh, let's check the website from which uh, she took this um, uh, uh, pictures. Yeah, she chose the Question. Well, definition of censorship. This is also interesting how the students are decided to research into it, in which way. Okay, and what I asked her, uh, she discussed about the opinion about the first censored and the second one, and about idea. And uh, her task is to go forward because. Uh, if, um, for her, it's easy to do and to attach here the work. Her personal opinion about this. Uh, was this correct from government side? Was this incorrect? And uh, what about the censorship today? What kind of evidence? Anything about personal opinion, including case study. Including case study. So we see this kind of... Um, approach source collection it's not totally collection it's a bit more rather than collection but well some analytical um approaches uh again the propaganda was totally new for students it was great to use it and they understood this exactly because today we're um, closer to discuss totalitarian countries and propaganda in totalitarian countries <laughs> The second uh, way how uh, we're using this is bit different and classes different, grade tab. And you see here the work of the students and you see here the unit, which is our unit, which uh, we're still in the unit now. Still at the moment and source evaluation. And see what you see here, summative task. Yes, it was revolutionary for me, to be honest, because the task and concept of the task wasn't difficult at all for them, because they already know the skills, because it's second year where I teach them, so it's not totally new for them, so how to evaluate the source. Only, only be difficult is what I wanted to give uh, to students, was to build these arguments inside this platform. And it worked because you see here the work. Firstly, I will zoom out it to show you the first impression how it looks like. And now to go into the content. What, what is going on? How it's different from the previous task? Why we call the source evaluation? How the students are evaluating the sources? Firstly, I need to show first my step how I did it. Uh, see? 
to simplify for them and to give them much more organization way, um, I gave them, uh, this was my first page. I will on my main one box, which is in the center here. So, uh, sorry, I used yellow cover, but you see red cover inside. So I gave them instructions how to work on it. And I introduced these instructions in 10 minutes during the lesson and we started practice during the lesson. So choose your cover and put your name on it. Then step, uh, this is step one. Step two, well, why this appeared here? I can't get point, but anyway. Step uh, two, choose an appropriate source, a written source. I want you to focus on written sources, yes? And primary and secondary, because during the lessons and during the, this was end of the chapter. So that's why we discussed a, a lot of visual sources. Now was time to go um, in, uh, as a summative to ask them to analyze the uh, written sources. Primary or secondary doesn't matter, only from the valid web page and put here in one note. If source is large, yes, size, because some sources are huge speeches, for instance, yes. Martin Luther's speech from Birmingham and Jail is really huge. And if you decided to choose a speech, full speech, come on, it's too much. You need to put only web page or will be preferable to attach in word file too. Uh, to check it because I need to check the source in the same way and the evaluation. So this will be for me. That's why I wrote in last uh, point will be preferable <laughs> to attach in what of course the students are ignoring this. Uh, the next step is write analysis of the source in separate or oh, what is written here, sorry. In separate note. So to analyze the source, then step four, in separate note, values. What kind of value source? Are? Then they know how to evaluate the source based on the origin of the source, when the source was created, by whom, uh, the date of the source, and uh, for, um, the person and status of this person, the purpose, the main aim and cause uh, of the source, and content. Concept. What, what is the main ideas based on the source? And because several students still had questions, so what I did, uh, I wrote additionally some kind of clarification. So attach here files and attach will mm, some uh, your evaluation because I need to check anyway here. I will write my comments definitely, but from here I will write the other comments as well. And I just, I, I wanted to follow them um, a resource evaluation form in a simple way to show how to attach file. To go forward and to see students work. For instance, you see the works. Uh, the student um, put his name, then website, and then he started to evaluate the source. The article discussed the Little Rock 9 group who joined an all white school, Arkansas 1957. And he wants to analyze the source deeply. In other aspect, he chose to upload the file. I will open just now with you and to show you how it looks like. Uh, this is the value and limitation file. As I asked him to do so, so I will open in Google Doc, I will check, and I will put in the same way. So it's very comfortable, see? We're working not in separate folders, because I have a lot of folders, I'm sure you as well, <laughs> but we're um, working in comfortable manner in one platform, and the documents are in Google Doc as well. The students are using Google Docs. Okay, so go back to see how this works for other cases as well. Some students wanted to emphasize the visual sources. No, this was not task. I asked them to do exactly to evaluate. And I guess you understand what will be my remark here. No, you need to evaluate the uh, written source, not the visual source. Because during the lesson, I remember she, exactly the student, uh, discussed the source effectively. There is no need to discuss the same source, especially the visual one, during the summer class. Uh, for instance, Iraqi, 
of this is name of the student. He chose the web page. I will click on it to check. Yes, our favorite one of the famous web page, and that includes valid. Uh, okay, what is it going here? Yes, uh, it's slow connection, and uh, at least because of where you and he, yeah, he decided to put the origin here, voting rights. Uh, 1965 publishers and television networks. So origin of the uh, source, then purpose he wants to write here. And he, he already wrote a value. The source covers wide range of material in short and effective manner, offering easier and more practical way of understanding the content. Of course, uh, he needs here to support by evidence, and uh, he will see this my hint here. Um, you actually support by by evidence. Evidence we usually call uh, quotation. To use a, a quotation, it means to convince us that he is right. Right? Yes. And this is good approach. I think students. Mm -hmm. I had two feelings. Uh, uh, in one class, this worked effectively. In other class, students had less motivation. It depends on the students, you know. But this will have also one problem. Not all students had access on the, this web page because majority of several students are using mobiles and this is not a mobile application. So for them, I gave them option to send me the works on email or on manager back, which we have the school on our platform. And then what we did, we I put in zip file here uh, all the sources together, and we with uh, I put on manager to share because this task is for sharing. You see your strong sides. You see how student is writing origin. Oh, it's great. I will use the style as well. So this is like class discussion, like student is discussing and other student is using his ideas to convince or to, to revolt a speech or to reduce it. So this is pretty good. We see full picture, sometimes part of the picture, but anyway. Uh, and next, um, we have no idea yet, but I will share one my idea, which I have, I need to do away soon. Something like spontaneous exhibition after ending of the summative task to give them feedbacks and to analyze. My task is based on the spontaneous exhibition. I call the task in this way. Of course, it's based on the uh, platform. Mind map will be used. I will ask students to find in their apartment uh, something very historical, very, doesn't matter which, uh, should be called old one. Uh, or should, should be notebook, old one, or should, should be some document from the grand past, doesn't matter, but something very, um, very historical. To take photos immediately, I will give them a very stressful time. Uh, I have no idea yet, but I, I want to share with you 10 or 15 minutes to find it, then to take the photo on it, to put here immediately, and to write annotation. Why this is historical? something, document or evidence, in which case she or mm, he sees this history. This is also will be interesting, I guess. This, uh, yesterday I thought about this, uh, something like very interesting and maybe you as well will try, why not? And lastly, which direction I use in 11th grade? It's different. Uh, this direction I call the argument building strategy so see in each grade we see different strategy in the first case uh, it was again to sum up uh, shortly the source collection plus uh, well analysis and personal opinion in second case uh we use as a <laughs> uh, sometimes summative task or doesn't matter as a task to evaluate deeply the source and lastly Mm, maybe one of the one of the uh, way how to use it. It's argument building strategy. Uh, this is my my uh, in eleventh grade. I don't need to ask them. To, my color will be red. It's oh, oh, oh. they're not adults. Uh, oh, they're adults, but they're not kids. Sorry. 
So there is no need to define I'm teacher and uh, my cover is red. Uh, it, it's obvious, they will understand easily during this lesson as well and do based on the content. So my thesis and the task which I put here was this. Factors that influence, for instance, this was our daily unit, one of the current unit. And factors that influence the USA to use the A-bomb against Japan. And you see here the ways how we need to develop this argument step by step. Uh, firstly, I will zoom out to, to show you the visual part of it. Okay? Sorry, it's not accomplished fully. Uh, dear colleagues, we're in working process just now, and that's why. And students are working. For instance, tomorrow they as well will have, not tomorrow, or Monday will have less than night. So, and let's go to the, to see what they are doing here. Great. So we see here something like interesting point. Was Japan already major educated by August 1945? Again, the question was one factor and very, very um, effective question, which is uh, uh, also a debatable question. To end the war as soon as possible, this is answer. Probably she wrote this, I know who did this. Uh, this is uh, her favorite words. Bombing to be source of and morale had not worked. There was no revolt against the regime. And what is her next step? The next step to support by the source. Uh, I will zoom for you the source, sorry. Because, oh, I will zoom again. Because it's not evident. I, will, I need to click on you know, my. Yes, just now. So you need to be sure that you, you clicked the node adequately. Otherwise, yeah, something will be wrong. Okay, and you see here the source and the author of the source. So, and uh -huh, probably she used the uh, um, uh, textbook and he, uh, she uploaded the, uh, wrote uh, here the page number. Based on detailed investigation of all the facts and supported by the testimony of the surviving Japanese leaders involved, it is the survey opinion that set in prior to 31 December 1945. So the document, very important document, document to support exactly this claim. And we see in other students' annotation, it's interesting. Just I need to zoom it. What he wrote, or she, ah, what does it mean, GT? Ah, GT, it means students uh, first initials, yes. Georgia, for instance, yes. And the survey group suggested that Japan was already defeated and ready to surrender caused by the USA forces. And the island jumping, there was no need to improve Russia or uh, involve Russia or drop an A-ball. Uh -huh. This is a resume from the source. And he wanted by this to emphasize, uh, to sum up the idea of the source. Great, see? We, uh, we see here in other source, Nina, she wrote this, I was on it. And she put here the uh, Admiral Chief of the Staff of the President of the United States from his autobi autobiography first, uh, was there, 1915. And she wrote Office of the History, and great that she used this. Uh, I think the use of the A-bomb is an issue that still bothers the American conscience, as uh, Giovanna said. He wanted to believe that they directly resulted in Japan's surrounder, he said. But if you look at the decision-making process, they didn't. So this is also supporting evidence. Uh, something is happening here. Yeah, she wants to claim this point. And this is the evaluation point. See, this is a bit complicated because sometimes we, I need to check each point definitely. But uh, as I mentioned from the very beginning, it should be not paranoid not to use this absolutely in each lesson, but sometimes to go in this way to see each other's works and to see the wow, all the works together. This is also a good way for us, for teachers, but for students in the same way. Uh, and we see here one student wrote several logical sentences. I guess I need to zoom each of them and to show you. Uh, we can change this form as well, see how I'm doing. Only this option we have, yes. Air campaign, campaign had not destroyed Japan's ability to make the war. U.S. General Lemay focused on civilian destruction. 
mean much of infrastructure in, intact. Real network, the core of arsenal, and the essential fault barrier between uh, Hokio and Hosu were not disabled. Okay, and let's check. Mm. Something is going wrong here, but okay, we will skip it anyway. Just now, my in um, seems because already my internet connection is not so effective. But she puts yes here. I will try once more, and if nothing is just something she wanted to put, just wait. Okay, she did something here. I will try to open it. And will be interesting. Okay, I will skip it. Definitely, uh, I will try to figure out. Hold on, hold on, there it is. Ah, you see? Yeah, I mean, I see that it's opened on the bottom, but we can see only your internet. You need to change the screen that you are sharing. Ah, okay. Okay, we'll share a little bit later with you. Um, okay, firstly, I, 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 oh, yes. Oh, there it is. It's appeared. It's appeared. Yes. Ah, she put my presentation here. Why she did this? Oh, this is actually my mom. We discussed based on the slides, and she decided to put this. I thought that she, this was her personal work. No. So, I put several things for them and she decided to put them. No, 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 <laughs> this is mine. She needs to put the personal. Needs source support and clear link. I wrote before, before, and support developed this point deeply. This is my comment because you see needs and this is much more of the source because this is only source which you feel. Here we see, as you see, here we see different direction. Absolutely deep, 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 uh, before, um, before debating. So we'll have debate on it and this will be our one of the last lesson because uh, um, mid of the June, we're finishing the semester fully. And we need to finish by the uh, debate and evalu evaluation as well and this is preparation for debates in which students need to build very really strong arguments uh alice actually this is the things which i wanted to share with my mm -hmm. colleagues and will you again to sum up uh 1.1 of the source collection will analysis and to push students to understand a valid source valid website and less valid and of course the topic it's up to you to choose the second point is source evaluation should be summative or not summative it doesn't matter but to go further and to give them much more instruction how to build strong something like a strong um, evaluative argument so values limitations uh based on the given method uh then the uh, argument building strategy to prepare for debates uh, about specific, very specific issue will historiography and to use a lot of supporting evidence, including historiography, of course. And lastly, the spontaneous exhibition, which is possible also to use here. So I'm sure there will be a lot of other ideas I want yeah. to share just on my experience with you. Yeah. Thank I, you. I do only have one question about the um, the argument building mind map that you showed us. Yes. Uh, do you do you discuss this in the classroom? So yeah. or in the virtual classroom in in this specific case. So as far as I understood, you use it after the lesson, so for, so that students can show what they learned. So sort of. Ah, thank you for this question. I will clarify it, and it's my my mistake. No, no, no. Firstly, where my lesson starting point is starting sharing the screen or other students are sharing this instead of me. And we're discussing how we show a CV with progress. They saw my evening comments, for instance, evening comments needs analysis. And we are doing, doing lessons. In 11th grade, Alice would have this privilege to have 90 minutes lesson. You know, mm -hmm. it's really privilege, and that's why we have this opportunity to be honest. So, 15 minutes 
dedicated to the argument building strategy, not only exactly mind map, but to hear students' arguments. And then after discussion, please, I'm asking David, please write down just now what you mentioned just now, please don't to miss it. Yes, so we're doing this during the lessons sometimes and students are welcome to use mind map anytime evening or at night it's up to their regime but this should be daily work before before debates something like kids for debates mm -hmm. okay and then do you do the debate in the classroom yes, yes. okay this will be experiment as well debate here <laughs> to use debates in google hangout yes yeah okay uh, it looks very, very interesting, and it looks like a very interesting instrument to use. And yeah, you, you showed us very uh, different and with different levels of difficulty um, activities to do. So thank you very, very much for that. Let us know how the spontaneous exhibition goes. Yeah. By the way, just, I'll them, them. yeah, maybe maybe we can write a short article about it. I'm very curious about what your will be what pleasure for me. <laughs> Okay, okay, why not? Okay, well then, um, I don't have any other questions. I think uh, that's all from my side. Maybe if participants have some questions, I will collect them via email and send them to you. Will be great. Will be and put great. you in contact with them. Um, thank you very, very, very much for your time and for sharing how you use MindMap with us. For all the participants, see you in a couple of weeks with the final lesson on assessment.